All right, we're playing around with ellipses now. So what I have here are two called foci. A is a focus, B is a focus. So the first thing you need to know about ellipses is that there's two focuses, foci. The parabola had just one and a directrix here, now we have two. And I have one point out here that is kind of telling us the distance from these foci. And so one thing to notice, if I were to slide A and B further and further apart, the circle, what well, used to be a circle, is kind of stretched out and turned more oblong. It's called more eccentric. You can actually put a number to eccentricity, but if you want to do that, you should look it up on Wikipedia. We don't have to do that here. Our goal today is to just graph it. And so the foci are very important points that you need to know to graph it. Um, just one also thing, note, thing to note, if you were to place A right over B, you have yourself a circle. And so now, based off of these two foci, we should be, and, and based off some points along the circle, we should be able to figure out how to graph these ellipses. So we gotta draw ourselves a picture here. We need to have an ellipse that's centered at the origin zero, zero first before we can start shifting them around. Okay, now we call the longer length the semi-major axis. And so this longer length over here, we're going to call this a long. And so the two points in this circle right now, centered around 0, 0, are going to be a0 and negative a0. That's our semi-major axis. The semi-minor axis is going to be 0b and 0, negative b. Okay, and now we're going to have foci like right there and right there. Sometimes they're called F1 and F2, but the point is that they're going to be another number, C. Okay, and so everything is based off of 0, 0 so far. So one really important property to ellipses, and this is how they were originally created, is that if you were to wrap a piece of string around the two foci and then stretch it out and put a pencil right there and then drag your finger around letting the the strings guide your hand you would all you would carve out an ellipse and the, the reason for that is the distance here and the distance here these two distances in ellipse from the foci to the same point are always the same so there's a key relationship inside the, the ellipse that we need to know so that you can, you can use it to create equations. And that is b squared equals a squared minus c squared. So unfortunately, this is not the Pythagorean identity. It's really close. It has a's, b's, and c's, and squareds. But the relationship is a little different. And here's why. If you imagine yourself in an ellipse, and you were to stretch the string all the way over and then back like that. Well, what would you be doing here? You would have a, a string that would be going from one of the foci all the way over to the edge and then back a little bit. Now, this little part that's overlapping is the same distance over here. And so what I'm getting at is that the entire length of this string that we're thinking about is going to be the length of the semi-major axis. Because if you go from the focus over and then back, that little overlap is the same distance that you're missing on the other side. So what we're saying is that the string, no matter where you put it, is always going to have the length 2a. If I put the string right here, it would connect up like this and back. And now what would happen is I would have a length of A over here and A over here because the semi-major axis is A in both directions. So here we have A here, we have B height on this triangle here, and then we have C here. And so you see here C squared plus B squared equals A squared. So I guess you could write it also the other way, A squared equals B squared plus C squared. And you know what? I What I tell people is, if you can just picture this relationship in your head and remember the triangle. The triangle is attached to the semi-minor axis, 
and the semi-major is the length of the hypotenuse, then you don't have to remember which one's which. So we're also going to do the same example. What would happen if your ellipse is elongated the other direction? So we have to kind of step aside. You're going to have the same relationship, um, just a different triangle in there. We have a0, we have negative a0, we have 0b, and 0, negative b. But because it's elongated in the other direction, our focus now is going to be on the opposite axis. And so when you do your string, you're going to be drawing your string to the semi-major side. Now you have a and c and b. So the relationship is going to be opposite. It's going to be a squared plus c squared equals b squared. And this is for the horizontal versions. I'm sorry. It is for the, I guess, when the foci are, are vertical. Okay, so I haven't given you guys the equation yet. The equation is... Okay, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. a is always going to be your horizontal axis, and then b is always going to be your vertical. Now, depending on the situation, though, you're going to have different Pythagorean, it's, it's kind of like a Pythagorean identity that you have to use. Okay, so why do we have to have the Pythagorean identity? Let's say that we have an ellipse with foci at negative 3, 0, and 3, 0, and then the semi-major axis is going to have a length of 8. Okay, so what I do immediately is I start drawing a picture. The foci are going to be here and here, and the semi-major length is going to be 8. Now, you might be thinking, which direction is semi-major? But semi-major, your longest axis are all, is always going to be along your vertices, your, foci, your focus. All right, so we're going to have a picture that looks like this. Now, if this is 3, and this is back 3, then we know that this is going to be 4 over. Okay, so here's the issue. We don't exactly know how wide this is on the semi-minor axis. We know that it's going to be 4 in both directions. Now our job is to figure out the other one. And this is where that triangular identity comes in. This is 4. This is 3. we got to figure out b still. So 3 squared plus b squared equals 4 squared. B squared is going to be 16 minus 9. B is going to be the square root of 7. So that's our semi-major axis from the center out. So this is going to be 0 square root of 7 and 0 negative square root of 7. Now, we figured out all of the main points. We just have to throw this in an equation now. So based on the form, we're going to have x squared all over something, y squared, it's going to equal 1. x squared we already had. We had a as 4. So underneath we're going to put 16. For b we had square root of 7. So square root of 7 squared is 7. Now this is the actual equation for the ellipse. If you were to type that into a graphing program, it would graph you a nice ellipse with all of these properties. Now what happens if you have to start translating them around? Let's do another example. Now it, uh, an ellipse has the major axis endpoints of such and such and a minor axis length of 8. So our job is to figure out the equation of this ellipse and as a bonus we're going to make sure we have the correct focus points. Okay, so first of all I'm going to put this point representing the center. I don't know where the center is. Um, but we'll figure that out along the line. We have major axis endpoints of negative 2, negative 1, and 8, negative 1. So if you're visualizing, that's going back 2, down 1, going forward 8, down 1. So it's going to be a horizontal line. And so I'm going to put negative 2, negative 1 here, and I'm going to put 8, negative 1 here. 
So now we can actually figure out the center from this because halfway between 8 and negative 2, if you average points, you find the halfway point. So that would be 6 divided by 2. That would be 3, negative 1. So right off the bat, I found the center of this, this ellipse. Now I have to figure out the major axis po points. Okay, so if the minor axis is 8, we know we have to go 4 in both directions. And so I go up 4, and I go down 4, and I can fill in the points. This would be 3, 3. And if I go down 4, this would be 3, negative 5. Okay, and just checking here, if you do 3 and negative 5 and then divide by 2, that would give you negative 1. It would average out. And so we have our ellipse here. And we actually have our a and our b, and we can figure out the equation. So let's do that real quick. Uh, without a shift, this would normally be x squared plus y squared. And underneath the x, you do the a value squared. So in this case, it's 5, which means this would be 25. And then the b value would be the distance there, which we know is 4. So this would be 16. But it's not in the right position, so what we now have to do with that is adjust it. Doing the opposite rule. So the center is at 3 over down 1. So for our x, we have to do x minus 3. For y, we do plus 1. And that's the equation. Our ellipse with the right width and height and the right center point. So really quick, what if they were asking for the focus points? Well, we know the focus would be right here. And that B right now is 4. And the hypotenuse is the major axis length. The major axis length in this case is 5. So working backwards, we have to figure out just what this C is. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And if you're familiar with 3, 4, 5 triangles, C should be actually 3 in this case. So if they asked for focus points, we'd be able to go back, put that triangle in there, and then use a Pythagorean identity to figure out where those focus points are.